Hello there, sword friends. This is going to be a very quick review on a Skydro Domoe Katana. And you might think that, hey, you're going to be super nice to it because uh, it's got a swirly mitsudome on it, or at least part of a swirly mitsudome like you like, and you would be maybe correct. Probably not. I don't think I'm going to be overly nice to it. But uh, it should be noted that there are a couple things that you should know before I go into the meat of the review. One, this is a secondhand sword, as are many of the swords I review, and it may not be completely representative of what you would expect to get if you bought one new from Skydro or an authorized reseller. So just know that. In fact, know that this one actually had some scuffs on it prior to me getting it. Somebody went over it with some sandpaper along the polish. It's a through hardened sword. It doesn't have a hamon. It's not folded. It doesn't have any hado or any special characteristics to really view, but it does have a blemished polish and you'll see that in some of the photos. Don't hold that against it. Yours would probably be shinier if you got it new. Uh, the second thing I should note is that I am not an expert in swords or martial arts or cutting or any of that kind of stuff. So take my thoughts, which is what are contained in this review, with a grain of salt because they're just, just my thoughts based on this sword that I have. I have some measurements for you here, and before I go into them too much, I want to explain what the measurements are. So the handle is measured from the top of this fuchi right here, not including the guard or cross guard or suba area here. Uh, it's measured from the top of this to the bottom of the kashra. That's the measurement of the handle, and that's pretty straightforward. The blade is measured from the tip to the moon machi area here, so it doesn't include this kind of uh, blade collar area here, which adds about an inch to the length of the blade. Uh, the sori is measured, again, that same dimension from the tip here to the moon manchi. If I were to set that on a table and then measure the, the largest part of the curve, that's the sori, and it's supposed to measure the curvature of the blade. The motohaba and sakihaba basically just mean width of the blade at two points. So one, uh, this area right above the, the blade collar is the motohaba, the sakihaba is where the yokote would be, or kind of where the tip begins. I'm not 100% sure where I should be measuring it, but I kind of measure it where the tip starts going in. Then the Moto Kisane, Saki Kisane are the same areas of measurement, the same points of measure, but it's a measure of thickness, so how big the blade is this way. Those measurements show you general distal taper and kind of at least from two different points. And then the weight of the blade is taken just as it is right here out of the Saya. The point of balance is also measured out of the Saya, and that is if I were to balance it on my finger, I'm not going to do that right now because it's an oil, but at what point it would balance, and it's about five and a half inches up from the Suba, which is measured from here up. Now I'm trying to track down some research for this particular review. I went to Skydro's website and unfortunately it's not able to resolve. Maybe this is an issue with my computer or their website or just today. I'm not 100% sure, but I can't actually see what the manufacturer's advertising for this sword specifically because their website doesn't work. But I can look on Cult of Athena. Now the trick here is that Cult of Athena is clearly advertising one that has a bohi in it. And I imagine the blade is made with and without a bohi, but since this blade is appearing to be a little bit shorter without the habaki and a little lighter, I suppose it would make sense. Mine's longer, doesn't have bohi, so it makes sense that it would weigh a little bit more. But I don't know, I can't really compare this sword, which is different, to the one that I have, especially since they're not the advertised specifications from the manufacturer. If I go to Sword and Armory, it almost looks like this one's silver, but it doesn't have a bohi. So this is subsequently the best price I was able to find on it at $500. But these specifications are a little shorter, a little lighter, but I don't know if this is a different sword. I don't think it's a different sword. I don't think they make a silver version of the sword, but, uh, well, it even says yellow bronze, and, well, the habaki here doesn't exactly look yellow anyway. So the, the basic gist is I can't really take these specifications to specifically either. Other websites don't really have any actual websites to look at. Even Amazon doesn't really give you a whole lot of specifics about what's going on. And if I go to Swords of the East, I can see that this one, at least that they're advertising, has a bohi, but the specifications are really all over the place. I mean, here it's saying 28 and a half to a 30 inch blade, 10 and a half inch handle to an 11 and a half inch handle. I suppose it's not really all over the place. It's a difference of about an inch, inch and a half, but it's, you know, still, there's no official advertisement from the manufacturer that I'm able to see, and the specifications do seem to jump around, which isn't crazy. It's a handmade sword, supposedly, so the fact that they're going to be slightly different from piece to piece is common enough. The first thing I'm going to look at is the Saya, and what I'll note is that it is a big gloss black Saya, which means it's going to show fingerprints really easily, but also be easy to clean. The 
Sai really doesn't have a whole lot of character, honestly. It's it's very simple, a big gloss black Sai. The lacquer does appear to be reasonably well done, though I don't spot really any blemishes that are not from misuse or banging around on my part. The Koiguchi is made out of horn, and I can actually make out the transition line between the Koiguchi on the Saya, but it's, it's very well done and has a very nice, kind of seamless, elegant look to it. The Koiguchi holds the Habaki really well. I can hold the blade upside down, give it a little shake, and it doesn't come out very easily, but at the same time I can push it and it comes out without really a ton of effort. So I would say that this is, is pretty well put in there and that it fits about what you would hope it to fit. Well, at least I would say that it's pretty close to ideal in terms of fit and finish there. The Kojuri is uh, basically just a little rounded end and I can't honestly tell if it's horn or just wood. It's polished and uh, nice enough, but there's not really a transition line. It, the lacquer kind of flows over it pretty seamlessly. So if it is horn, then I can't really tell. And if it's lacquer, it's holding up very well. The other thing that I note quite a bit on my reviews is the transition lines. And by that, I mean, how the Koiguchi, the mouth of the Sai, and the Fuchi, and the Suba, and all of that line up with one another. If there's really jarring, big transitions, more than a couple millimeters, they stand out as aesthetically unpleasing. And this uh, lines up very, very well. There's a little bit of a transition there, but overall they follow the same shape. The lines are reasonably clean, and there's nothing that really juts out too enormously to the eye. It actually uh, flows reasonably well. Oftentimes manufacturers tend to make the Sai a little too big or the Fuchi a little too small and the line between the Koiguchi and where the Fuchi is just gets too gaudy and ugly. But this is, is pretty well done, I would say. As for the Suka, well, what I can tell you is that one, it has a very pleasing kind of hourglass shape. It has a wasted look to it, which is appreciated, noted, and I, I really like it when they make that look come out. You can see that it gets a little thinner in the middle. The diamonds on the Ito are actually pretty even. I mean, there's a, there's a couple spots where they're not 100% even, but overall, they're a little smaller than what I like, but that may be intentional. Still, the, the diamonds are, are overall on the same plane, kind of, sort of, better than most people get with Ito. Uh, the Ito is also very tight. It's noticeably, uh, noticeably tight pretty much everywhere on the sword. It wiggles a little bit on the Manuki, but the Ito is is very uh, very tight for a production sword. The Ito also lines up pretty well on the Fuchi and Kashra in terms of transition. Again, uh, that's something that I get nitpicky about, but there's no jarring transition between the Fuchi and the Ito. It kind of slides right in there and, and makes a very seamless transition. And that's, that's good. It, it takes a little bit of planning and thought to make that happen, and I can see it happening here, and that's good. The other thing that I'm going to note about the Sky is that it's not too terribly difficult to take off. It had a little bit of pressure on it, but there wasn't any glue or anything underneath the uh, Sky or the handle that held it on. Sometimes manufacturers glue them on when they can't get them right, and this holds on the sword really well. It comes off. I, I took the two pins out and I had to put a little pressure on it, but it actually came off. And the Suka wasn't that easy or difficult to take off. It was kind of right in the middle. I had to put pressure on it, but at the same time it, it did come off and it went back on without too much difficulty as well. Underneath that, the Suka core was not cracked. Now, keep in mind that this video that I take of the Suka core was after I tested it, and so you'll see what I did to it later. But in effect, uh, there is no cracking on the Suka core. It's, it's still in good order, and very often Suka cores are cracked from manufacturers, but this is the second Sky Jiro I've looked at and the second Suka core from them that hasn't been cracked. So, tip of my hat to them on this one. The next thing I'm going to tell you about is the Habaki. Now, the Habaki is just a simple brass Habaki, and frankly, it has a little bit of a wiggle to it. Uh, I can shake the sword around, and you can hear it rattle slightly. The movement is really a little bit of side-to-side -side movement. If I try to push it with my fingers, it doesn't feel like it moves, but nevertheless you can hear it actually rattle around a little bit, which can be distracting. The Suba and the Suka and the Fuchi and Kashra are all very tight, but the Habaki is what is rattling, and it just has a little bit of movement, and that is when I press on it from side to side. The thing I like about the Habaki is that it has the Skyduro emblem put into it. It makes the Habaki just a little bit different. So often manufacturers put the same kind of Habaki on everything. It's this brass, very plain Habaki, and you see it 
if you look at just about any production sword. Now, a lot of people only have one sword, and it's not a point that really bothers them or that they look at, but to me, I've owned hundreds and hundreds of swords, and when I see the same hibaki on them, it gets to be uh, kind of a point of contention where it's, it's a point where manufacturers could do something just a little different to make their products look and stand out from their competition. This one has their emblem on it, and it's reasonably well done, and it adds a little bit of character that I think uh, really suits the sword well. As for the Suba, the Suba is fit on the sword tight. It's not too big and it's not too small. I think the Suba could honestly work with a Wakazashi or a Katana. It's right in that size length. I like that the colors all match the Fuchi, the Kashra, the Suba, the Habaki. All of them kind of fit in together really well and color theme wise match. Got a swirly Mitsudome on it. It's, it's, I like usually three commas and this is two, so it's like a yin yang, but. You know, frankly, it's a theme that uh, I'm very preferential to. I think it looks really good and it's very well executed. Now we'll move on to the bladey, pokey, stabby part. And so the blade is a mixture of positive and negative for me. And I'll elaborate a little bit more. So what it is, is supposed to be a 1075 steel. I don't really have any way of verifying that to tell you if it is or isn't. Uh, it's supposed to be a through hardened blade, which means it doesn't have a hamon and it's made out of a, just one steel. It's not folded, there's no character in the blade. And to that, I, I think, yeah, I don't see any identifiable hamon. There's no signs of folded steel or anything like that. And the blade looks just like a, a reasonably mirror polished through hardened blade. The edge is pretty hard. It held up pretty well in test cutting. And it's, it's also supposed to be a Hira Zakuri geometry. Now, Hira Zakuri is difficult for me to describe to you in words because I'm not good with it. But more to the point, it's something that you see very commonly in Tanto and Wakazashi from J. It's basically one big bevel. There's one gentle slope to the edge. There's no central ridge line. There's no kind of flattened, thicker spine area, at least not in a pronounced different angle. So it's, it's one kind of big bevel, if you will. At least that's the best way I can find to articulate it. Now, there are historic examples of katana length blades in here is a Korean geometry, but they're not terribly common. Something you often see, as I mentioned, in Wakazashi and Tanto, but there are historic examples. My main complaint about the geometry, and this would kind of be where I think they missed the mark a little bit, is that the geometry looks like they started out with a Shinogi Zakuri blade and kind of buffed or sanded out the ridge line. It kind of has that same general shape, and here is a Korea supposed to be its kind of own refined style and this is this to me is not that it looks like they started with a shinogi zakuri blade and afterwards decided to make it a hero zakuri blade and i don't think that's really the spirit of hero zakuri but if i had to classify this sword it would be hero zakuri for sure uh, but that would be my main complaint with it now other than that the blade's straight it's sharp the planes on the blade as i noted with a previous sky Drew review are pretty flat. It's difficult to make the planes on the blade flat. Those are the flats of the blade and you don't see ripple marks and hammer indications, stuff like that. It's, it's reasonably well made for what it is. I just think the geometry was off a little bit. Also, we can talk about the Nikago. Now, oftentimes the Nikago is a neglected part of the blade, mostly because most people never really take the Nikago off. There's a lot of people that buy Japanese style swords and never disassemble the sword for cleaning or for any other reason. So the Nikago actually has some attention to detail. It has a nice little signature on it. It's reasonably clean and well made. It could be cleaner. It could have more detail in it. It could be more, but keep in mind that this is a 500-ish something dollar sword. And for what I'm seeing here, the Nikago is, is cleaner than what I've seen on other 500 something dollar swords. I did a little bit of moving the sword around just so you could see what it looks like in motion. To me, personally, it's difficult to describe how it feels more or less because I understand it's subjective and you may think something completely different than I did. To me, it feels a little bit tip heavy. Now, I like a tip heavy sword. It feels like it wants to move. I would say that it is controllable. It moved through targets and I had no difficulty getting the edge to go where I wanted it to go but I did feel like it was a little bit clunky. It was not the most maneuverable or agile or lively sword. It had a little bit of kind of dead tip heavy feeling, but not in a way that I would say was grandiose. It didn't really detract from my experience. It's more a, a note to say that it's tip heavy in a mildly uncomfortable way. It could be thought out a little better, but at the same time, it's a big, hearty, stout, big chopper. It's a 29 inch blade. It's not a light blade and it certainly doesn't feel like that in the hand. I would say that it kind of meets my expectations. If you look at the specifications, it feels like what those specifications would read like on paper. It has a tip-heavy feeling, it wants to move forward, it's not the most agile, but it's not completely dead weight in the hand either. 
In terms of cutting, I did some basic cutting on water bottles, I did a little basic cutting on fruit, I moved on to some tatami mats, and what I can say is that the sword is frankly a joy to cut with. Uh, the edge moved through all of the targets that I threw at it really, really well. I didn't have any beef with it bending or twisting or uh, any of the Ito loosening up or really any condition issues with the sword to note. The only thing that did happen is eventually I smacked a coconut. Now the first pass through the coconut actually cut through the coconut. These are young coconuts. They still have a husk on them and they're empty. I ate all the delicious goodness inside and filled it back up with water so that it had some weight. And it actually cut through the coconut and the shell without really an issue and there was no damage to the blade. The second time I did a strike and it was not the best strike. I, I was off on my angle a little bit and it dinged the blade slightly. Now the it has a kind of, I wouldn't even call it an edge roll as much as the edge deformed and moved off to one side slightly in a very small area, about two millimeters long and about a millimeter deep, roughly. Now, that said, it's not really that bad in terms of damage. It's pretty minor considering a bad strike to a coconut, but it was notable that this damage did happen during the course of testing. Now the remainder of the testing that I did really isn't too intensive. I used thick rolled wet newspaper and it actually cut through some of that pretty well. I also continued to cut through some tatami mats and it cut through tatami very, very well. It's kind of like a cheat code for swords almost. The here is a curry uh, blade profile along with the fact that it has a pretty high level polish. There, there's not really a lot of drag on anything. It moves through targets really easy. It's hard to get the blade going at first, but once it's going, I almost don't even feel the target unless it's a really big, thick, rolled wet newspaper. And bear in mind that I very rarely am successful at cutting these six inch diameter, big, hardy, thick, rolled wet newspapers, but I was actually able to move through it a couple times with this sword.
in terms of using the sword for really what it's intended to do, you know, kind of dojo use, I don't know that cutting water bottles and food is really the intended purpose, but cutting single rolls of tatami mats, it was uh, really effortless, and I think it did a great job there. All right, now is the part where I'm going to try and explain whether I think it's worth it or not. At $547, that's the price point that I'm gonna use. That's what's on Cult of Athena. You could probably find one for around 500 bucks. Do I think it's worth it or not? My short answer is, for me personally, no, but in general, yes. And allow me to explain. So in general, yes. And that is because there's a lot of little details that for a sword at this price point are done well that are not done well on its competition or some of the other pieces that are out there. There, you know, you have the Ito that lines up well on the Fuchikasha. There's not a transition. This transition line is pretty good. The Nakaga was good looking. Things are tight. The Ito's tight. The Suk isn't cracked. A lot of those things have been or could be problems in some of the competing blades that I've reviewed at $547. I think they do a lot right at this price point. Then there's the usability side of things. Well, you saw me cut with it. It did a pretty good job. It moved through tatami really easily, which is where I would say it excels the most. It's a little heavy to do kind of water bodily trick cutting. It's a little heavy if you're gonna just be doing EI with it. But at the same time, it's not so heavy that you couldn't do those things. It's just kind of more geared towards a tatami mat cutter, if you will. It doesn't have kind of the competition, big, wide, fat profile that many tatami mat cutting competition style blades do, but I found it to work pretty well cutting tatami, as you saw in the video. It also moved through really thick rolled wet newspaper, which not every blade I have does. And so in general, at $547, it's a good cutter. The edge held up really well. It did deform on the coconut when I gave it a bad angle, but that is really expected. That's a very hard target, and it only deformed a small amount. It could be sharpened out, in fact. So in terms of how well it held up and all of the little things it gets right, I really have no reason to tell you not to buy it. Uh, if you like a sword that looks like this, you like the Hirazakuri geometry, then I think this is a really uh, great value. The reason I wouldn't buy it personally is just a subjective reason. I don't like the Hirazakuri interpretation or geometry. Uh, it bothers me a little bit that it seems like a Shinogi Zakuri blade, and uh, then really that's it. I would rather have a Skydro Warlord. I would rather have a different product from Skydro because I think they do Shinogi Zakuri really, really well. This one, I'm just not a fan of the geometry. I love the fittings, it's got swirly mitsudomes on it, but again, very subjective. That's really my only reason for me saying I don't think it's worth it, is I would rather have a different Skydro blade for $547 that kind of got the geometry right as well. That bothers me, but chances are it's not gonna bother anyone else. It certainly doesn't impede the functionality and it's a cosmetic detail that you may or may not care about. So that's really all I have for you. I hope you found this review helpful and informative. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If there's something else you'd like me to review or something you think I missed, uh, throw that in the, the commentary below. And that's all I have for you. As always, cheers and thank you for watching. the thing that it was supposed to be. For hard target cutting, uh, I did it, mm, fuck. What, you know, whatever the hell you were watching this review for, this review gave you, there's really no, there's no thing to impede your decision making, fucking fuck. Big and glossy. Not, see that a little later in the, god damn it. Vacuum. Well, I can't really complain. I mean, vacuuming is good, and I'm not vacuuming, so really, I shouldn't bitch. That was, that's really it. That's my dryer. Clothes are done.